All right, let's start with 18.4 work together, which is a little bit of a doozy. Um, it is a financial leverage schedule. Um, and so, oh, I gotta go back here. Hide the answer so you can't see. Um, we are talking about a store called KMT, um, which wants to consider doing some updates, some renovation on its store. Um, the total project cost of that renovation is gonna be $100,000. Now, the company believes that they can issue 7%, 500,000 bonds to finance 90% of that project. The remaining capital is going to come from internal sources. The re renovation should enable the business to serve more customers. We want to complete an evaluation um, of a financial leverage on that proposed renovation, looking at if the project will increase operating income from 6 to 7 or 8% of the project cost. So a couple of things we need to keep in mind here. One, that the project total is going to cost $100,000. Our company believes that we can finance 90% of that by doing bonds. So if you think about that, financing 90% of that would be $90,000. The remaining capital is going to have to come from internal sources, which means that we are going to have to come up with that. So if you take $100,000, minus the 90% of it, or 90,000, that we think we can finance, the amount that we have to kick in from our internal sources is $10,000. And that's where, if you come down here and look at the schedule, that's where this investment is coming from. So this investment is actually $10,000. As I just explained, and I'll do it one more time in case you're like, uh, I don't know where you're getting that $10,000 from. Total project cost is 100000 We believe we can finance 90% of that by doing bonds. So 90% of $100,000 is 90000 That being said, we need an additional $10,000 from our internal sources to cover the total project cost. So that's where the 10000 investment is coming from. It's going to be the same throughout six, seven, or eight percent. So we actually can leave that there across the entire thing, okay? Now let's talk about how do we know how much our operating income is going to increase by, okay? It says that in order to evaluate our earnings potential, we are going to assume that operating income will increase by six, seven, or eight percent of the total project cost. So remember, our total project cost is $100,000. So 6% of $100,000 is $6,000. And you can do that in your calculator or you can do it in your head. Obviously, 7% would be $7,000 if we take that times $100,000. And 8% times the $100,000 is $8,000. So that's where those numbers are coming from when it talks about our operating income. Now let's talk about how much it's going to cost us in terms of our interest expense. So interest expense is coming from the information pertaining to the bonds. So remember that we were going to take out bonds for 90% of the finance option, which is $90,000 or 90% of 100,000, so $90,000. Our bonds are going to be at an interest rate of 7%. So if we take $90,000 and multiply that by 7%, just getting my handy dandy calculator out here, we end up with a total interest we're going to have to pay of $6,300. Now that's going to be the same for each one of these because that isn't going to change based on our operating income. Regardless of how much we make, we're going to have to pay that 7% on the $90,000 of bonds. Okay, So that's where the 6300 is coming from. Now you don't have to do, because we're not paying interest semi-annually, they're just asking how much interest total. So just take the face value times the interest rate to get your interest expense. Now let's look at whether we're gonna have a net income or a net loss. If we only do a 6%, we're 
notice that we're actually at a loss here because our interest expense is greater than our operating income by $300. Okay, so I'm going to put negative 300 there. We have a positive 700 here and a positive, is it 17? Hundred, yes, positive seventeen hundred here. Okay, so that's simply taking the difference between operating income and interest expense to get either our net income or a net loss. Now we also have to pay federal income tax, obviously, on any income. So we want to make sure that we're keeping track of that. So our federal income tax is twenty five percent. So we take three hundred dollars times twenty five percent, and we get negative. 75. And when we take 700 times 25%, we get 175. And if we take 1700 times 25%, we get 425. So now we're going to see do we have a net income after federal income tax? So we take 300 minus 75, and we end up with negative 225. And we take 700 minus 175, and we end up with 525. And if we take 1700 minus our tax of 425, we end up with 1275. Okay. So here we have figured out how much we're going to make for each one. Okay, now what we need to do is figure out our return on investment. So we figure out what our total return is and we divide that by our total investment. So what we do is we take our negative 225 and we divide that by our $10,000 investment and we wind up with negative doing the math here. We wind up with negative 2.3% if our operating income is only going to have $6,000. Now we take our 525 and divide it by $10,000 and we wind up with a positive 5.3%. And then we come over here and do our 1275 divided by 10,000 and we wind up with 12.8%. So when we look at this, okay, again, remember we're looking at how much our operating income is going to increase versus how much we're going to have to pay, and then figuring out our return on our initial $10,000 investment. So when it comes down to it, what possible outcomes should we renovate the store under? If we renovate it and only increase our operating income by 6%, that's going to give us a negative 2.3. So we would obviously not choose 6% here because that wouldn't make any sense. However, because both the 7% and the 8% are in the positive, then it would make sense for us to finance this project in order to increase our operating income. So both 8% and 7% are viable options for us to complete this project with. If you need additional help with this, um, take a look in your book, but it also is shown on slide 43. Um, it doesn't give you a lot of information where these numbers are coming from, um, but you can certainly ask for help or check your book um, in order to complete this uh, 18-4 work together and then the 18-4 on your own.